about you, actually. I figured you did. <laughs> glad, you were, glad you were paying attention. I am ready. Yes, sir. Are live. Hello, YouTube. Myron Golden here, and I am here with best-selling author, <laughs> business mogul, genius entrepreneur, <laughs> former big-time New York lawyer, Rachel Rogers. Rachel, how are you doing today, sister? I'm doing excellent. You are doing excellent. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and I met Rachel um, just recently, and I was blown away by s the success she's had, um, the transformations she's, she's created, and just her whole story. So Rachel is the author, and I'm gonna, I might as well show them your book early. She's the author of this book, We Should All Be Millionaires. And I thought, she told me that title, I thought, that is a great name for a book. We should all be millionaires. Thank you. So, and then the subtitle is A Woman's Guide to Earning More, Building Wealth, and Gaining Economic Power by Rachel Rogers. So, Rachel, this book is fire. You're fire. Um, and how did you come up with the title, We Should All Be Millionaires? Like, what brought that on? Yeah. Well, there's a book called We Should All Be Feminists. And I've never heard of that before. Yes. And, you know, so, and feminist just means that you believe in the equality of the sexes. And so when I saw that, I was like, I love that. I'm like, there should be a thing called We Should All Be Millionaires. It's just so like, that was exactly that where was my brain went. Yes. <laughs> it, was, it was first thought. Okay. Um, and so I just had that title. Like when I submitted my book pro proposal, I knew what I wanted it to be called. And my publisher fought me tooth and nail on that title. Really? Yes. They like surveyed all these people and said, you know, people won't like the word should and you know blah 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 they had all these reasons why they didn't think people would like that title mm -hmm. now we've sold a hundred thousand copies and now they've offered me like three more book deals so mm -hmm. <laughs> so i think they'll go with my title next time <laughs> <laughs> no doubt and so they thought that people wouldn't like the title because they did surveys they're like well they're gonna like it because yes title. well then so i how did you how did you like how did you persuade the publisher to go with your title instead of the title they thought you should Yes. Have. Well, first of all, I believed in it mm -hmm. because I said, you know, you so you believed in it more than they didn't believe in it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I was willing to fight. Mm -hmm. Listen, you got to be willing to fight and argue for what you believe in and, and what you want and what you stand for. And I wanted a title that would disrupt. I wanted a title that you're, you know, you're going to walk into Barnes and Nobles and see, you know, thousands of books. I want something that's going to stop you in your tracks. And so that's why I wanted that title, because it's disruptive. It's not a phrase that people think right. normally. And they wanted something like, I don't know, it was like million dollar mindset or something <laughs> like that. And I was something just, generic and vanilla. Yeah, I was like, plain. isn't there like three that's books beige. with that title already? Yeah, that's beige. Yeah. So I said no. And, and then I surveyed my own audience, actually. Mm -hmm. I did. I, I went on Facebook. Some of, some of my audience might actually remember this. They might have participated in it. And it had thousands of responses. And the interesting thing was not everybody said they loved it. And here's the key. They didn't all love it. It was polarizing. A some lot of people loved it. it and a, a lot, lot of people, people hated, hated it. it. Right? They were like, 100. you shouldn't say should. You're going to get canceled for saying should. And some people told me. I was like, listen, but that's what I believe. And I hope that what the title needs to do is get you interested enough to open the book and then you'll find out why am I saying should, right? Mm. Why am I using that phrasing? What is my point, right? You gotta open the book to find out. And mm. so that's, that's the whole point. So when you're creating things, make sure you're creating some curiosity around it um, and interest, right? We have to not be afraid to say something that is controversial. controversial. Exactly. Mm. So, so you mean you don't have to just make everybody happy with every word that comes out of your mouth? First of all, you can't. It's actually. Oh, there's always that part. <laughs> yeah. It's impossible. So, you know what? Like, listen, those who are going to hate me, they're going to hate me. And those who love me are going to love me. And that's what it is. And honestly, it's none of my business. I get DMs every day from people who are like, I loved your book. Here's what I loved about it. Here's how I applied it in my life and all that. And then, you know, every now and then somebody posts and says, like, I didn't like it or there's a bad review. There's not that many of them, but there have been. Sure. And, and none of it is my business. Right. Because my business was none of it. Is none of it. Book. Because my business was following my calling, putting my work out into the world, sharing what I believed, what I thought would help people, and then putting it out in the world and letting it do what it do. Mm, and so it's good. not my business after that. Like so it's good. for you to do well, however it speaks to you, whatever message it gives you, whatever aha it gives you. That's what it was meant to do. And I'm not here to try to control that. Mm. You know. So it sounds like to me that you believe people should not always be vying for votes and approval mm. from everybody or 
necessarily anybody yes. when you're doing the thing that you were put here to do. Yes, I, I think pretty much never <laughs> should you be doing that. <laughs> because what are you doing then, right? You're watering down who you are. Mm. It's why like we don't enjoy like corporate environments, right? A lot of people complain about corporate environments where you're expected to wear your hair a certain way and don't have tattoos and don't don't speak your mind and don't have a big personality or or don't be an introvert and don't want to participate in some of the office parties, right? Like everything is a problem. It's like we all have to converge and become one person to be in a corporate work environment, for mm. example. Um, and so we don't enjoy that, right? Because our individuality is stripped out. So I think we have to be ourselves and we mm. have to just accept that some people gonna like it and some people don't and it's fine. Mm -hmm. People send me nasty messages sometimes or people will comment on my stuff and say they don't like me or leave a bad review and I'm like, that's fine, right? Like do, last do I checked, thing. you're not taking no money out of my pocket. Mm. It's not harming my children, right? Like, oh, if somebody's saying something mean about me on Twitter, guess what? I'm gonna just close the app, <laughs> put it down, and go have dinner with my children. <laughs> Right, and live your life. <laughs> live your life, yeah. exactly. Stop letting other people control how you feel about you, right? Well, like, you know what you meant to do here. Go do it and start worrying about what everybody else thinks. That's, it's, it's so remarkable. And, and, and we all get this. It's, it's really interesting, though, how hard that is for people to do because yes. we all, we, we were born into what I call the cultural hypnotic societal mechanism, mm -hmm. right? In our culture, there's this, there's this thing that puts us all in a hypnotic trance and we all start saying the same stuff and doing the same stuff and going to the same places and believing the same stuff. And we never really stop to think about what we really think or what we really believe about yes. a thing. And it's so fascinating to me that we go to these little, these little fake people manufacturing plants <laughs> called schools. <laughs> I never said that before. Um, <laughs> So, and what they do is they, they get us to pack away the real version of ourselves and manufacture a plastic avatar that we show to the world, mm -hmm. right? And it's, 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 it's so goofy mm -hmm. and it's so silly. And so people literally go through life and can't stand on their own. Fascinatingly enough. So I did really well in school all the way through. Yes. The third grade. And it went down. <laughs> <laughs> and it went downhill from there. Yes. But I had polio as an infant, so I've walked with a brace on my leg my whole life. And kids can be mean. Oh, they are very mean. Y'all y'all ever had any mean kids at your school? Like, I'm talking about mean. Listen. Right? <laughs> they called me names. They made fun of me. Mm. They did, like, And so, like, I had to develop this tough exterior or just have, walk around my feelings hurt all the time. Yes. Right, and I decided, I had the good fortune of having had polio as an infant, and so I decided as a child, that, well, if I don't like myself, I'm not gonna have any friends, so I'm gonna like me. Yes. I'm gonna like me so much, I'm gonna take me everywhere I go. Yes. Right, the real me too, not the, not the plastic one they want me to make. In fact, I refused to make the plastic one. Yes. And I got Same. in trouble all the time. So anyway, but that's, <laughs> a, that's another conversation for a different day. Let me guess, you talked too much in school? Because I definitely did. I definitely didn't talk too much because I was an introvert. Oh, okay. I did not talk too much. I just didn't let people push me around. Yes. And it didn't matter if the people were students or teachers or principals or whoever. Mm -hmm. No, that ain't true. Yeah. Right? No, that, that ain't it. No, I ain't doing that. Right? <laughs> I I had no problem. Like, I, I don't, I'm not, I don't like controversy and I don't like to argue and I don't like to fight, but I'm willing to. Yes, same. And I realize, and I, it sounds like you realize this too, I realize that you cannot really have peace in your life unless you're willing to have some war. Yes. Right? You gotta draw some lines in the dirt. That is a true statement. And yeah. when I was a kid, my, well, I had two things. One was I'm biracial, so my mom is white. Mm -hmm. And so people would see this little black girl with a white woman and be like, oh, you must be adopted. Like they'd make all kinds of assumptions mm. and all kinds of statements or whatever. Mm. And then my black friends would make fun of me and they would call, what did they call me, Oreo, I think? Mm. Which most of my friends were black, right? <laughs> so, so it was like, that was one of the things that I got made fun of as a kid. Mm. And then also, you know, I was, I was, I was, I talked a lot with my friends, but I was quiet when I didn't know people that well. Mm -hmm. And so people will mistake your quiet for, oh, you must be nice or you must be a pushover. You're a victim. Let me see if I can victimize you. Mm. And they quickly learned. That wasn't it? That wasn't it. You wasn't the one? Yes. Okay. So I had a lot of fist fights growing up. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't say, she didn't say I had a lot of arguments, a no. lot of fights. Fist fights. Because people, would, I mean, there would be girls way bigger than me that'd be like, you know, I'll meet you outside after school. I'd be like, bet, meet me. 
<laughs> Let's go, right? Okay. I'm talking all this mess. My, my, meantime, inside, I'm like, oh, God, Lord, please, please. save me. <laughs> Help me, please. What am I going to do? She going to get me. But I would never let back, them see Never that. back then. Never. And then I will show up, and they wouldn't show up half the time. Mm. Or I'd show up, and I'd be like, okay, we doing this or what? And I'll be quick to throw the first punch. And they'd be <laughs> mad because they just didn't expect it out right. of me. You yeah, know? Oof. But I'm just like, listen, I'm not going to be anybody's victim. So... If you want to fight, we're going to fight. That's what it's going to have yeah, to be. Yeah you, yeah, you might be a target, but you ain't going to be a soft target. That's correct. Okay. I'll give okay. you a run for your money. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to stay on the right side of that equation. <laughs> I'm going to do whatever y'all want to do. So, 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 Rachel, you were a big time, this is, these are my words, and you can change them if you'd like. You are a big time, high powered, high paid New York lawyer. Uh, I'll, I'll accept that, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you liked all those adjectives, didn't that, you? That, that works for me, that description. <laughs> okay. and, and so a lot of people don't realize the level of commitment mm. that is required for you just to become a lawyer. Yes. Before you even get to big time, high paid, high powered. Yes. So, so like, what does it take, like, what, is it, what do you have to do to become a lawyer? Not that you want to help people become lawyers, but like, people will look at you and they say, well, she came up with a book title because she saw a book title, mm -hmm. and then she wrote a book, and yeah, her life is easy. But like, that's the, that's the part that people see, but the part they didn't see was undergrad school, law school, mm -hmm. all that. Talk yes. to us about that. Even getting into, like, even going to college was extraordinary in my family, because mm. I, I grew up in a low-income family with lots of struggles, lights going out, food insecurity, housing insecurity, all kinds of stuff. So just even believing that you could go to college and finding a way to pay for it, that was all on me. I had to figure it out, mm. um, which I did, because listen, I was a hustler, mm. uh, you know? And so <laughs> I would get on the phone with the financial aid office mm -hmm. and be like, you got one of them Pell Grants? What you got for me? <laughs> and, and whatever they would give me, I would call them back and negotiate and say, listen, I'm an excellent student and this other school is offering me X, Y, Z. So Which what I need you to do is, so, you wow. know, I, I had those negotiating <laughs> skills. Don't ask that, me. Where'd that come from? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe watching my mom, because one of the stories that I love to tell and it's in the book is, and I, I thought of my mom as a, a complete hero watching her do this. But there was one time where the electric company, Con Ed, came to the door, came to our apartment door, because they're about to turn off our lights. And they give you one last chance to pay that bill before they go downstairs in the basement and do the thing with the thing and turn off all the lights in your apartment. And so, and this is not the first time it happened. So anyway, Con Ed comes to the door. And back then, they used to have like credit card offers, right? And they would like offer you some kind of account and they would send you something in the mail and it would look like a check. And it would look like it was a real check if you called and activated which my mother did not do, uh, but she had one of those lying, lying around. And so she took that check and she wrote Con Ed a fake check, okay? <laughs> now, I'm not saying go do some criminal activity, but what I am saying is she handed that check. That bought us two weeks time. By the time they figured out that the check was late, she was gonna get paid and have the money to pay the bill. So she like, she was our hero because we got to keep our lights on for another 10 days, right? Wow. Until she could pay it. Otherwise wow. we would have been in the dark for a week and a half, wow. right? Um, and so I just think like sh just watching her figure out how to make a dollar with 15 cents. You mm. know what I mean? It's just, I saw that. And so I was like, okay, there's always a way. And mm. that's just what I have always believed. If there's a will, there's a way. I'm going to find it, mm. you know? With my creativity and my just sheer willpower, I'm going to find <laughs> a way to make whatever I'm trying to make happen, happen. Wow, so, so you got into school, you negotiated yes. grants and did that whole yes. piece. Yes, same thing I did in law school. Negotiated uh, scholarships so, so that I could get more money. Um, and in law school, one of the first things they teach you is how to write. Legal writing is what it's called. And you have to take like several semesters of it. And in legal writing, what they do is you write a whole narrative, right? And it's all long and drawn out. And what you have to do is go line by line and cross out every word that's unnecessary to still get the point across. Mm. And that's how you become a good writer, mm. right? Being a clear communicator, being able to communicate concisely and, and efficiently. Of words. Yes. And if you can be entertaining, that's even better because you are having to spin a story, right? You have to get the judge to see yours and your client's point of view on the matter, right? There's a set of facts, you can't change the facts, 
but what is the narrative around the facts? What's the story around the facts that you're going to share? So I'm, I'm telling you, there is no better preparation to be a business owner and have to market your services no. <laughs> and have to sell your services than being a lawyer because wow. you learn how to do that in writing and then you learn how to do it in speaking, right? Because wow. you have to get up in court in this very intimidating environment and Persuade See, people yes. that th I'm right, they wrong. Right, and persuade somebody powerful and stand up to them and, and say, no, 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 judge, here's the thing I want, I think you're missing, right? Mm. And it takes a lot of courage to do that. And once you so do that, good. like, it, you know, getting on video and having to sell your stuff, forget it. Like, it. I ain't scared of, of that. Exactly. <laughs> like, like, is there a judge about to curse me out and throw me out of this courtroom <laughs> in front of everybody? Throw me in jail, potentially, right? That's much more scary. Or, mm. you know, the girl that wanted to beat me up <laughs> as right. a kid. <laughs> I face way scarier things. So, you know, and here's the other thing I tell people. Like, I used to be afraid. People like, you're fearless. I'm not fearless. I never was fearless but I just cared about paying my bills and being able to take care of my kids more than I cared about what the people on the other side of the screen thought about me mm. so I was going to do the videos and I was going to do the marketing I was going to put myself out there I was going to make the offers and if they say no they say no but like I got to pay the bills and this is what the people told me I got to do to pay the bills so I'm, I'm going to go out there and I'm going to figure it out yeah wow. so be more afraid of being broke and struggling than Come you on, are man. afraid of somebody not liking you Wow, that is so good. That's so good. <laughs> so, so uh, now y'all see why she sold so many books, right? So, <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't care if you don't like my book. My book is for the people who like it. <laughs> right? so, Listen, that's literally the first line of the book, though. <laughs> really? Literally, you have the book? I do have the book. Read, read the first line. I don't, I don't have my glasses, <laughs> okay, on, so I'll, I'll let read. you read the I'll first read. line. Because <laughs> that is so funny. I said... I believe every woman should want to be a millionaire. If you agree with me, this book is for you. If you strongly disagree with me, this book is definitely for you. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> talk about a double bind. Wow, you, they, you put them in handcuffs, they didn't even get a trial. You put them, you put them in handcuffs, they didn't even get a trial. Okay, now I know who I'm dealing with. So, so I'm, gonna, I'm gonna pose my questions very, very carefully. <laughs> so, okay, so, so you went to law. You went to law. You got in college. You did that whole deal. That took yes. four years, right? Yep. Probably cost some money. Oh, it cost a whole lot. Whole a lot. boatload. Boat and you know, it was all loans. Right. Because so. you know me, I, I was trying to get every grant and scholarship and thing that I could, and then there were some loans left. Right. So. So, like, how much does did your undergraduate degree cost? I mean, like, the money that you borrowed, the money you got grants for. How much did you end up having to pay for your? Uh, About a hundred grand. Hundred grand. Mm-hmm. Hundred grand. And then you're going to law school. Then I go to law school. Ask me how much that costs. How much was law school? <laughs> <laughs> how much was law school? <laughs> 300 grand. 300 grand. So because now you're... you can't you can't work while you're in law school. They actually forbid you from working. I don't know if people know that. I didn't know that. Yeah, you are not allowed to work. So like if you have so a job. So how you going to take care of yourself? Exactly. You take out loans. So you have to take you out live loans on for borrowed the... money for three years. Yes, you have to take out loans for the tuition, and then you also have to take out loans, loans for your live. living expenses. Yes. I did not know that. Yeah. It's crazy. Time. It's very expensive. <laughs> so, so, so three hundred thousand for law school. Does yeah. that include the living and the school? Yeah. Okay. So three hundred thousand. So four hundred grand. Yep. Four hundred thousand dollars. You get a degree. Mm -hmm. Now you have to take the bar. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's another. How thing. How many questions are on the bar, by the way? I've always wondered that. Or in, yeah, in I, New York. I, I think it's like two hundred or something for okay. the first half, which is multiple choice, and then you have to do essays. Mm. So, and I took uh, two different bar exams, so I had to study for both. So you are literally, you just live the bar exam. Like my husband was talking about the other day, I used to have like uh, signs, like I would print out on pieces of paper definitions, legal definitions that I needed to know, and they'd be all over our kitchen cabinets and all over the bathroom and <laughs> every surface in our house. So like everywhere I looked, it was something I needed to remember because it is so much memorization. It is. It is like an absurd amount of <laughs> memorization mm. that you have to you have to know it, you know. So, because they're gonna hit you with the essay, the 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 multiple choice, and like I said, two hundred of those. And I mean, part of it, it's a mental game. Right, just keep it cool. Yeah, yeah. Just be just not freaking out and losing. Because it. they're they're actually trying to make you fail. The oh test. yes. They're not trying. Oh, they oh, don't yes. give you the test. They are so you can pass. They give you the test trying to make you yes, fail. Yes, the test is your adversary for okay. sure. <laughs> and literally, I'm telling you, I showed up. Your it's it's in a major like you know like one of those exhibit halls and those mm. big where big trade shows are it's in one a place like that and there's nothing but tables set is it up timed it's timed 
Yes. And so then there's somebody wow. to your left and somebody to your right. And the people to my left and to my right, when I tell you they were having complete and utter meltdowns. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just kind of like, I don't see you. I don't hear you. I you got were, this. You were zoned out. Yeah. And I just, listen, let me tell you something. The power of speaking to yourself. Mm, uh, we make so the good. mistake so much of saying, I'm ugly. I'm fat. I'm not mm. smart. I'm so dumb. I'm this. I'm that. We talk so terribly about ourselves to ourselves all day long. I do not talk like that. Let me tell you, what's playing in my head is like, you got this. You do it. You did it before. You're going to do it again. Wow. We don't know how we're going to do it, but we're going to do it. Right? Wow. Like, this is what I'm saying to myself. Girl, you look good. Right? Like, I say that too. <laughs> right? This is what, that has to be, start saying it to yourself until you believe it. Right? Mm. And then you're going to show up differently. You're going to show up. You can manufacture that confidence. Mm. Right? And need, you need to believe it for yourself and show up in a different way. I think, stop speaking so cruelly to yourself. Right. And then also you won't tolerate other people speaking like that to you yeah, as well. Because most people talk way worse to themselves than they'll let anybody else talk to. Them. Exactly. Exactly. Stop cray -cray. doing that. Stop yeah. doing that and surround yourself with people. And, you know, you're you're doing it right now by being in this space. But surround yourself with people who lift you up and who speak that way to you. Right. Like my best friend, he'd be like, girl, what you worried about? You got this. Listen, you better go ahead and do that. Mm. <laughs> Listen, that lip and them shoes. <laughs> He's like, and those skills you got, you go, you go tear it up. Right. Like this is what you if your friends don't say that to you, get new friends. OK, 100, 100. get rid of those friends immediately. Family members, too. They not exempt. Wow. <laughs> OK, <laughs> wow. Listen. You, ain't, you ain't got people getting rid of your family, do you? Listen, it, listen. I'm not saying you. I'm, just, I'm not saying you have to get rid of them, but I'm saying you can limit contact, okay? <laughs> because the thing is, is I have dreams, right? And there's a calling. I have something that I'm here to accomplish with my life. Mm. Am I going to let somebody, because they're a blood relative, be in my ear all the time, making me feel bad about myself, preventing me from taking the action that I need to take in the world? No, I'm not going to allow it. Mm. So that doesn't mean that I'm not going to call you on your birthday or see you at Thanksgiving, but we ain't going to be on the group chat all day long for you to be tearing me down, right? And I would just have that conversation <laughs> straight chat. up. Listen, how you need to talk to me, it, it needs to be just as good as how I talk to myself and how I talk to you. I, I, I offer people the same mm. respect and love and encouragement, right? Mm. And if that's not how we talk to each other, I don't want it. Keep mm. it. Wow. Like that. You mm -hmm. forgot to say exclamation point. <laughs> exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point. <laughs> Put three that's of those a, on there. That's <laughs> you are wild. Okay. So, so you went to law school. Yes. How much does the bar exam cost in New York? Well, I can't even remember. But the bar exam is like a couple thousand dollars, right? Oh, if that's I, all. Just if I remember thousand. correctly. But what's expensive mm -hmm. is the, um, the test. Right, like the test prep. So you're gonna take like mm. Barbary or um, I forget what, what they're all called, but there's a whole bunch of different ones that prep you for the bar and you just like eat, breathe and live it for, for like two months, right? Mm -hmm. And so that whole time, like they do this, you know, all of these lesson plans and stuff and they leave all these empty words and you gotta go figure it out and fill in the words and you watch in trainings. I mean, it, I would get up at five in the morning, go to bed at 10, and literally every moment that I wasn't eating or sleeping, I was doing studying. this. Yes. Wow. Um, and so it's it's an enormous it's an enormous undertaking. So like you you really don't do anything else but study. And the study program is like twenty grand or something like that. I can't remember, but and it was an the, enormous and the, number. And then the then the exam itself is a couple thousand bucks as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, wow. and I didn't do Barbary because that was the expensive one. There was a cheaper one, and so I did the cheap one because that's all. I, mm. I couldn't even afford that. I'm pretty sure I got some kind of payment plan or mm. hustled something up. Mm. Wow. <laughs> wow. You figured it out, though. I sure did. And so, so straight out of law school, after you passed the bar, what did you do? Did you get... Did you get an offer from a firm or did you go start your own gig? So my whole last year of law school, I flew all over the country to interview places or whatever. And I realized like the corporate life wasn't for me. So I got a, a job clerking for a judge. I think is the one of the best jobs I ever had. Um, and I learned so much because you, you get so much power immediately. You're telling lawyers what to do, what they can and can't do. Um, and you're sort of like the mouthpiece for the judge and like the go-between for the judge mm. uh, between you and the litigants and all that. So I'm like, negotiating with litigants every Friday. It was family court, so every Friday there was some drama mm -hmm. where somebody is supposed to have the kids or somebody didn't return the shoes or whatever it was. <laughs> so much drama, right? And so I would get on the phone with the mom and be like, yeah, I know, he's the worst, but what if we just did this? 
for this weekend only. Okay, let me see. Then I'll call. I know she's the worst, but <laughs> <laughs> what if we did X, Y, Z, right? And so I'd be in the in my office negotiating because otherwise they would file an order to show cause on Friday night, and everybody, all, me and all my coworkers and the judge would have to stay late. And this would happen literally every Friday. So I was the one that saved everybody's weekends. <laughs> wow. And, and just got people to, I would sort of be a mediator for them, essentially. Mm. That's what I learned. And I also learned how to r review and critique other people's writing. Um, I got to watch all of these amazing lawyers presenting themselves and learn from that and critique that and give the judge my opinion. Mm. Me, I'm like, why are they giving me so much power? I just graduated, they, they know that, right? <laughs> um, anyway, I finished that for a year and I just decided, I had several job offers and I didn't want any of them, to be honest. So mm. I was like, my mother was devastated. Job offers for like big money or just? Well, it was the 2008 recession. So it was, it was so, so money. Okay. Um, and so I, I just. Like 160. No, these were not big firms. These were like smaller oh, firms oh, that I was applying to. Yeah, it was less than 160. Because they shrunk oh, so the amount of people. I thought you said so so money. I didn't know you said so wet money. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yes, but because of the recession, right? This was a major thing that was happening for lawyers everywhere because all of these schools graduated. You know thousands of new lawyers mm -hmm. and there were not enough jobs at law firms because wow. they were all cutting the, their class because of the recession. Mm. And so I did have offers, none of them blew me away. And mm. I was just like, you know what? I don't want any of it. I'm gonna just start my own thing. And so my mother was devastated, but I started my own practice. <laughs> She's like, wait a minute. So where are you going to get paid from? <laughs> and I was like, oh, I'm gonna get some clients and I'm gonna figure it out. She's like, you're gonna do what? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what about the jobs? You had the job offer. Why are we taking that? Why are we taking that? Don't I'm you like, know just, you got some just watch loans? me, mom. Watch. Let me let me do this. I got this. And so you started your own firm. I started my own practice. Yeah, and I was making more money than all my classmates that were at the big firms within two years. Wow. So they were calling me like, so how you do that? Tell me, tell me more. Wow. <laughs> so how? So, and when you say more money, were you making were you making more than 160? Yeah, yes, I was making double that. So within two years, I was making 300. Okay. Um, and then within a couple more years, I was making 700. Wow. Mm -hmm. So like four years out of law school, and you balling for a lawyer? Well, I guess so. But I lived in New York, so my expenses were high. I had student loans to pay. Like it was still. I didn't feel, you know, it's interesting. You were making a lot of money, but you couldn't feel it. Yes, and I, and, and I still, I had a decent amount of money, but I think I just didn't, I wasn't tooting my own horn enough, right? Like, I wasn't recognizing what I had created. It would actually be other people calling me and being like, my clients, for example, would be like, hey, I'm running a business, and I don't, I'm not making as much as you're making. How are you doing this? And so they started asking me for business advice, which I would give them for free, and then a mentor was like, yeah, I'm gonna need you to stop doing that. And so I was like, okay. I'm gonna start charging for business advice too then. <laughs> that part. <laughs> but you know, sometimes you don't even see, this is why I'm saying your environment and your community matters so much because you need sure. people around you who say, do you realize that this is not a common thing, that this is a skill that is unique to you and right. you need to share it and you need to charge for it and it's valuable. Sometimes we don't recognize our own it's ours. Right, because it's ours because we're good at it and we think everybody else is good at it. No, you're not. Right. Like they, they, they all, like, for example, I'm not good at, like, aesthetics. So I have a stylist to dress me. I have an interior designer to make my house look fabulous. My sister can do that naturally. Like, that is her natural skill set. And she used to think it was regular schmegular. And I'm like, um, honey, no. This is I could definitely tell you from New York when you said regular schmegular. <laughs> 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 regular schmegular like, okay so what are those things like ask yourself what are those things that you are good at that people are always asking you for mm. you have natural skill sets and talents that you aren't even recognizing right and so you need to recognize that and then charge accordingly wow and so you how long were you a lawyer i practiced law for seven years practiced law for seven years and then you got tired of it? Or? Well, what happened is I, so I had. Cause you, you may, I mean, you making $700,000 a year or whatever you yes, said. Yes, but I wanted to make a million, right? Okay, so 700, it was yes. close, but it wasn't it. Yes, and here's the other thing too, get you some friends. So get you to friends that can be like, hey, you're so worthy, you're so amazing, you need to be charging for this, you need to go out there and do all the things, right? And mm. encourage you. Mm. And then get you some friends who are also like, I'm impressed, but I'm not all the way impressed, mm. <laughs> right? <laughs> 
who can be like, you know what, you've accomplished so much and there's so much more for you, mm. right? So you can realize like, I've done this, but I could do better. Gotcha. Um, and I felt that for myself. Like I wanted a million dollars, right? I wanted to make a million dollars a year because this is what happens. You make 700 and you're like, well, why can't I get to that million dollar mark, right? Mm. Then you get to a million, you're like, well, I would like to put multi in front of that million. Mm. Well. <laughs> so what if I could get to two, two million? Then you're like, you know what is better than, than, than seven figures? Eight figures, figures sounds very exciting. What could, let me see if I could do that. And I think it's so important, especially if you are someone who's black, if you're a woman, if you're the, t the identity that is not typically the one that has the wealth, right? Mm. Because then I think about all the little black girls that see my book, see me talk about millions. I think about all the people who see me making $10 million a year and understand like, oh, she could do it. And I feel she look like me. She got similar hair. She talk like me. She from New York or whatever it is, right? She, she like, ain't regular smegular. <laughs> <laughs> if she could do it, I could do it too, right? And so we have to follow that calling. And this is why I say we should all be millionaires because mm. we have the ability. We have the internet. We have YouTube. We have all of these tools that I all didn't have. Right when I started my business 12 years ago, I did not have those tools available that we have available today. 100. We have the ability. I think about Madam C.J. Walker, who is the first female millionaire in America, not first black female, right, put first, some respect on it, first, first female, female millionaire, millionaire. yes. Um, in, and the first black millionaire. Yes, exactly, in the U.S. And so she, think about what tools she had available to her mm. and the adversity that she was facing at the time when she was doing this in what, like 1912? Yeah, right, and time. where where are we today with what we have and the skills we have? Like your ancestors done fought too hard for you to not go get that million, okay? Well, I'm gonna need you to put some effort in mm. and get that money, right? Because then it's going to benefit the next generation. And, you know, people say to me, oh, I don't care about money or I don't want money. All right, don't want it, earn it, and then give it away, right? right. To the people it's, who need it then, right. whatever it is. But if you have the ability, then it behooves us to take advantage of the skills and the talents and the resources we have available to us and go make it happen. 100%. Wow. Rachel Rogers. <laughs> Sheesh. I said we hurting feelings today. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> hey. I got my protective gear on. I'm already over here. <laughs> um, so, so when you decided you weren't going to do law anymore, you just decided I'm not doing this anymore? No, it was actually <laughs> my clients kind of decided for me. What happened was I so I worked with a couple of clients uh, at, at business coaching. I was like, let me just try it because people ask me for it all the time. I want to charge for it. Let me just take a couple of clients and see what happens and see if I'm as good as I think I am at this. Mm. And so I did it. And though, you know, one of the clients is making one hundred thousand dollars and traveling around the country to make it. And so I helped her put all of her stuff, helped her sort it all out, put it online so she can make all that money from home and stay home with her kid, right? Mm. And so then she was making five, six times the amount that she was making when we first started working together within six months. So wow. I was like, oh, okay. So I was like, let me try it again, right? Then I tried it with another client, another, another client, just those first few clients. How much then, did you charge them? I'm asking. I don't even remember, but it was, you would be mad. Let's okay. just put it this it way. It was like peanuts. It was definitely less than $10,000. <laughs> I want to say maybe it was like five or $6,000, mm -hmm. which was a lot for me at the time. Like mm. I, I probably was scared to say that number to them mm. when I said it, right? Um, and then once you see the results, you're like, oh, wait a minute, uh-uh. I played myself. Listen, uh-uh, y'all ain't gonna be out here getting me like that. <laughs> <laughs> wait, I charged you how much are you out here making hundreds of thousands, right? And then, then, you know, then I started having clients who were making millions, right, after uh, working with me. And so I was like, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm gonna need to raise these prices. And, I, and they still too low, according to Myron. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> So yes, so yes, it was basically, I worked with some people, they started spreading the word and telling everybody like where they got these amazing results and people can see it. Right, And so yeah, because it shows up. It shows, right? They're yeah. like, wait a minute, I see you buying a new house, your right. business is popping, what's yeah. happening yeah, here, yeah, right? Yeah, what happened? They start to see it and so, then they were like, oh, I worked with Rachel Rogers. And so then more people came to me. And so then I started creating more formal offers like retreats or group classes and things like that. And then eventually it all just, you know, it all felt like too much work. Cause I don't know if y'all know this, but I have four children. So I don't, I can't be working all the time, right? <laughs> like I need, I need breaks. And so I was, I was too busy with all these different offers. And so I merged it all into one main offer. Um, and so that's, that's how I still work with people today, or it's one of the ways that I work with people today. But yeah, so I just, I started the business because I saw a need. And because too, there wasn't a lot of, 
uh, first of all, black women business coaches at the time, there were not a lot of women business coaches and all of the coaching that was geared towards women was always like six figure this and six figure that. And I was like, I made six figures and it ain't that much. I don't know if y'all did the math on this, <laughs> but it ain't all that much money attitude. actually. You got a little attitude. You got a little attitude. Did y'all see that attitude? So I'm like, funny. we need to be making seven figures. Let's stop talking about six. Let's start talking about seven. Mm. And so I was looking for someone to teach me how to make seven figures and I couldn't find anybody. Mm. There would be coaches out there, but they would have like one little talk or one little podcast episode and that was it. Nothing mm. like no courses, no training. And so I was like, okay, this is ridiculous. And then, you know, I eventually figured it out. And I was like, I'm gonna help a whole bunch of other people make it happen too. So I started my company, Hello7, closed my law practice, started that, and that was all she wrote. Wow, so good. It almost doesn't even sound real, but it's, I know it's real. <laughs> but, like, and so you were making $700,000 a year as a lawyer, and you walked away to start coaching business owners. Mm -hmm. Like, what was your bill, of, what did you charge for billable hours? As a lawyer. You know, I never did billable hours. Oh, you didn't do billable hours? No. So, you know, I was I was always fighting the power, right? Mm. <laughs> because everybody did billable hours. Right. Um, but when I started my practice, I was like, wait a minute. Let me, let me make sense. So what you're saying is I'm going to get better at writing these contracts. I'm going to do them faster, and then I'm going to get paid less? less? Yeah, yeah, I don't like that math. That don't, mm -mm, I don't like it. So, so I decided to do flat fees. So, and I would estimate like how much do I, how much time do I think it's going to take? How much value is it providing for the client? Mm. Oh, you getting a deal with HBO and you about to get paid, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars and I'm going to charge you what it like three hours of my time to draft this contract. Yeah, no, mm -mm, it don't work that way. <laughs> sure don't. So, so I raised my prices, right? So many people don't realize that no, though. No, I always they're, charge flat they're make, fees. They're making their prices based on how much time it took them or mm -hmm. what somebody else charges. You're like, wait, you're getting ready to get what? Oh no, that's the foundation of my price. Exactly, yeah. exactly right. Cause I'm providing this, you have to think about what is the result that people are getting? What is the transformation that they are gonna get from mm -hmm. your work and then charge based on that, not on your time, right? You know what went into my time? As we have already discussed, undergrad. First of all, overcoming poverty, <laughs> undergrad, law school, um, uh, working for a judge, building my own practice. I mean, literally decades of effort and learning have made it possible. And hundreds for, of thousands of dollars worth of debt. Yes. And then also hundreds of thousands, because don't think I'm, I pay for the same training and coaching that, that I sell, right? Mm. So, so I also am spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on training and coaching for years and years and years, right? This brain is very, very valuable. Come and on, you man. don't get it for free. Come on, and man. you ain't getting it at a discount neither, <laughs> okay? <laughs> but, and I know the result that I can get for you, so I'm gonna charge based on that result. Mm, and that's so how good. it should be. And I, I felt that way even years ago, because I, you know, I had a mentor who was a lawyer when I was starting my practice, and I would be so nervous about every new client or whatever, and he would say, you know what, you're not experienced, but you are qualified. Mm. And, and I would just repeat that to myself over Go and over with again. You, you're What's, not experienced, but you are, but qualified. You are qualified. That is. So, who, what's his name? The, the guy. I name? actually don't remember. <laughs> he wrote this book, um, "How to Start a Solo Law Practice." Wow. Uh, it's gonna drive me nuts. I have to yeah. go look it up. But yes. Yeah. So it was when like, I quote, when I quote, I'm gonna say Rachel Rogers said her mentor told her. <laughs> right. That's that's too long. I just want. to. <laughs> like, you ain't experienced, but you qualify. Yes, yes. So just repeat that to yourself when you get nervous about those first few clients or that next big move that you're about to make. Uh, you're, you know, you, you, this is how you get experience, right? Mm. You qualify yourself. You don't need to wait for a gatekeeper to say, you can write a book or you can speak on a stage or you can coach people or mm. you can teach this. Go do it, right? You qualify mm. yourself. I don't need a gatekeeper. I am the gatekeeper. Come on, okay? Here. You don't need to ask anybody for permission? I sure don't. Okay, cool. And the same thing, even with, listen, nothing will give you more power when you are going into negotiations or conversations with people that you want to work with than the willingness to walk away, right? Come on, yeah. Like when I, when I was going to submit my book proposal, I was like, listen, I want nothing less than this amount of money, and if you don't give it to me, I'm gonna go publish it myself, because I have my own audience. I, I already know who I can sell it to. They're right in front of me. I have their email addresses. <laughs> I would just email them and tell them I have a book. They'll buy it before it's done. So mm -hmm. either you gonna give me this money or I'm gonna get the money myself. And the only reason I wanna do business with you is because of the distribution that you have access to that I don't wanna put the effort in to go figure out. Cause trust me, I could figure it out myself if I mm -hmm. wanted to. I don't want to cause I'm busy over here with my kids and <laughs> doing other things. So I'll take this amount of money and you're lucky I'll take it. So you wanna <laughs> give me the deal or not?
<laughs> That's wow. how you want to approach it, okay? Wow. And all it takes is audacity. I don't need anybody else to tell, to validate me, to say I can show up with that. No, show up with that because that's how you feel about yourself. Mm. Wow. So there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I had to say something. At the end of that. <laughs> that's all I could think of. <laughs> so, so, so then you built a ten million dollar business. Mm-hmm teaching people how to grow their businesses. And, and you've got clients who are making millions of dollars. Yes. And you teach other people how to do that. Yes. And you have something coming up next week, don't you? I sure do. Woo, woo. <laughs> <laughs> okay. so, so why don't you tell us, what, like, what do you have coming up next week yes. that can help people who maybe are where you were? Yes. Like. Maybe they are where you were when you were overcoming poverty. Maybe they are where you were where they were hundreds of thousands of dollars in college debt. Maybe they are where you were or where your mom was when your electricity got turned off. Maybe they are where you were when you were building a law practice and you were making some money, but you said, oh, you know, I'm only making 700000 mm -hmm. I want to get to a million. Yes. So are you having something that can help those kinds of people? I sure am. And what are you having? So I'm, I'm doing a challenge. It's called the Make Money Moves Challenge. Make Money Moves. Yes, because if you want to make money, you got to make money moves. Okay? Come on now. You can't just sit around and be like, oh, I'd love I, to make millions of dollars. You mm -hmm. know how people say that? And what they really mean is, I would love for a bag of money to just knock me in the head right now. <laughs> and I can tell you for sure that that is not going that to happen. Ha it ain't happening. It's not happening. However, if you are somebody who's willing to put in effort mm -hmm. and willing to challenge your limiting beliefs, because mm -hmm. your limiting beliefs are producing the amount of money you have now. If wow. you'd like more money, you need to believe something different Come for on yourself. Here. Um, and so I will help you do that. I'm doing a challenge next week. It's called Make Money Moves Challenge. And you're going to make some money moves. And, and you'll do that at least a couple of times a year. Yes, I think so. So even, even after this video is done, yes. if they're hearing it like three years from now, yep. like you'll probably still be doing this challenge. I think I'll still be doing it. it it's so much fun. And I have hundreds of people signed up already. There is so much enthusiasm. Somebody actually showed up on Monday of this week because they thought the challenge was <laughs> they starting. Up a whole they week were so early. hyped that they were there and ready. And be, it was like, oh, oh, I'm a week early. Never mind. I'll see you next week. <laughs> That's what's up. That's so yeah, what's up. so it's it's uh, it's happening soon, Make and, money moves. I like and we're that. going to we're going to shift our mindset together. We're going to support each other. We're going to talk sweetly to each other and encourage each other. And we're and I'm going to teach you the money moves that you need to be making, mm, so um, they can become millionaires. Exactly, exactly. And I feel like it's my duty, right? Like I've learned how to do this despite whatever challenges I had, mm. and I had many. And so I feel like it is my duty to teach other people how they can do the same for themselves. Wow, make money moves challenge. And I know there's a link in the description yes. of this video. So if they want to go find it, they can go just That's click right. the, It's very easy. The, yeah. It's makemoneymoves.co. So. Makemoneymoves.co. Yes. .co. .co. Okay, cool. So, so how many days is the challenge? Five days. Five days. Mm -hmm. Are you going to be this intense during the challenge? Oh, listen, you're going to be a whole new person by the end of that week. Let me tell you right now. <laughs> listen, your friend's going to be like, she acting brand new. And you're going to be like, I sure am. That's wow. right. <laughs> wow. You better get on, on this next challenge so you can be acting brand new too, right? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you're going to tell your friends. <laughs> wow. That, that, I, I, I ain't mad about it. And then I they're going to be like, well, what are you doing? Because I see you got more money. <laughs> well, there's always that part. Exactly. Because when you have more money, it kind of shows up everywhere. It, it shows up everywhere. They're like, mm, you seem less stressed. Are you talking about going to the fancy place for lunch, <laughs> right? Like, yeah. now I see you buying new clothes, right? You look at you, your hair looking fierce. You got new highlights. What you doing? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. <laughs> See, you talked about all that stuff that ladies think about. I, I, didn't, I missed that. <laughs> it's true, though, yeah, right? I get it, though. Yes. I, get it though. Right. I remember when I couldn't afford extracurricular activities for my kids, or sure. I couldn't go, afford to go get my nails done, which makes me feel good, right? Mm. Like, I couldn't afford those things that I wanted. Mm. And now I can afford all those things and have a nonprofit and give back and you know, take care of my family, take my whole family on vacation, take care of my mom. Mm. Like it's, you know, we, we, money is not a bad thing. And I think Come sometimes on, people think, oh, money is evil. No, money is just going to amplify whoever you already are. Mm. So if you are a good person, I need you to go out there and get that million because then you will do, go do good works with that money. Mm. Right. So 
let's let's show people that there's a different way to have money and to um, yeah. use money, right? Uh, so yeah, it's, it's a way to serve, right? 100%. I have used resources to serve people, so and I think yeah. you can do the same thing. 100%. You know, it's interesting. One of the things I teach my clients, and you can tell me what your thoughts are. You don't have to agree with me, but. I, I'm pretty sure I don't even have to tell you that. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm fairly sure. sure. I'm fairly sure you're, you're gonna not getting your pushover mind. vibes from no, me. No, no, <laughs> I'm getting a lot of vibes, but it ain't pushover. Um, uh, um, yeah, I tell my clients, I say, look, don't use the people and love the money. Use the money and love the people. Yes. And then take it to its finest extreme. Yes. Use the money to love the people. Exactly right. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. When you have more resources, you have more time. Come on, you can man. be more generous. You can make a bigger impact. Listen, you can elect political officials based on how much money you have, okay? Go ahead. Go ahead so we need to have that power so we can create the world that we want to have, right? Wow. And so that's why I say we should all be millionaires. Yes, we should, right? Yeah. We can, and it's, therefore we should. It's so interesting. There's a, um, there's a story in the book of Ecclesiastes in the Bible. And this is King Solomon, wisest, wealthiest man who ever lived. Yes. And he tells a story. He says, you know, there's a little town. And a mighty king came and besieged this little town, this little city. And besiege means they surround it. They yes. cut off the water supply. They cut off the food supply. So everybody in the city is about to die. Yes. And it says, but there was in that little city a poor wise man mm. who delivered the city by his wisdom. Wow. You know what it says after that? No. It says, yet no one remembered that same poor wise man. And then Solomon said, and I said, hmm. wisdom is better than strength because the wise man beat the mighty king. Wisdom yes. is better than strength. And then he said, but a poor man's wisdom is despised. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons I decided, that my wife and I, we decided we wanted to create wealth for our children is because we wanted to be the biggest influences in their lives. Yes. We didn't want a drug dealer. We didn't want a rapper. We didn't want a movie star. We didn't want, we didn't want, um, a gangster, we didn't want somebody mm -hmm. other than us to have the most influence in the lives of our children. Yes. And so I wanted my children to say, well, even if I disagree with my dad, he must be right because he got more money than me. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Isn't that good? Yes, and it also makes me think of a corporation, right? Like a lot of people, I remember I had a job for a short period of time, it was an internship during law school where I worked for like a big gas and oil lobbying firm or whatever. And like they were causing all kinds of environmental problems. And I'm like here representing their interests. And I was like, I actually agree with the other people that are representing the environmental groups. How can I get a job over there? And I would always be looking for a job mm. over there. But I, I needed that paycheck, right? So mm. I couldn't just, I knew I wanted to walk away from that career and I did, but it took me some time and I, I, I had to support something I didn't believe in. And that's mm. something else that resources allow you to do, 100%. right? You don't gotta support or keep a job at a place that you don't believe in what's happening They here. give you the ability, like money gives you the ability to be yourself. Exactly. You ain't worried about, they gonna fire me, they gonna mm -mm. stop my check, they yeah. ain't gonna give me, what. Child, or please. even they're not gonna like me, right? right like right. all of those things, you get options, you get right. choices. And then you can give other people options and choices too because you have extra resources to help them. Like, oh, you hate that job? Don't worry, come work over here or I'm just gonna send you X amount a month and you don't gotta worry about it, 100%. right? 100%, so, so, okay, I'm, I, I gotta ask you some questions about the book. Okay. Because <laughs> I really, not just, like when I opened the book, I said, ooh, I, I just got it yesterday, y'all, so I haven't read the whole thing. But I opened this book and I thought, I really like these chapter titles. So you got the million dollar story. Mm -hmm. You got million dollar lies. Mm -hmm. Ooh, that sounds so good, million dollar lies. Let me add, and I don't even know what it's about yet, so I'm, <laughs> but I'm, a, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna ad lib, cause, cause I wanna know. <laughs> Have you ever asked yourself, what lies you are currently believing that are keeping you from making a million dollars? You know one of the lies I used to believe that was keeping me from making a million dollars? Well, that's a lot of money, that's too hard. Mm -hmm. Well, if I'm, if I'm making $10,000 a, a year now, it's gonna be a, a hundred times harder to make t a million. Yes. It's not a hundred times harder, it's a hundred times easier. Mm -hmm. um, you know what's interesting, one of the things that I always say is uh, the idea of affording something is a myth. Like Come it's, on here. It's not real. That's really interesting that you say that. I say something relatively similar. I yeah. can't wait to hear, see where this There's goes. There's no such thing as afford. Like, it's not an afford thing. Like, when I see something, I just saw something that I wanted to buy, a property overseas, right? 
And technically I can't afford it by like the world's definition of that. But I don't, I don't limit myself to what's affordable according to whoever does personal finance budgeting and teaches us budgeting, what we're supposed to be doing. Word. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the B word. <laughs> um, so, anyway. <laughs> but, um, but yes, I don't think about affording it. I think about, okay, I want it. What could I do to make that happen? So How can I make that happen? Oh. And so then I'm like, okay, well, let me go figure out a way that I can make that happen. Let me go think about how I'm going to make that happen. And I don't even think about how can I make the whole thing happen? I think about how can I make the first step happen? Oh, the first step is a deposit. What can I do to go make get that deposit up? Okay, now I got the deposit. All right, now I got how much time? I got two months, three months. All right, how can I figure out how I can make the rest of the money in the next two to three months? There is no afford, right? Like if I relied on affording, I would never have gotten here. Mm. Everything that I have bought, I cannot afford, <laughs> right? Like by the world standards, wow. I've bought training and all kinds of learning. I could not afford college. I could not afford law school, right? Mm. I couldn't afford any of those things, but I found a way to buy it anyway. Um, so and that's crazy. what allowed me to become the person that I am today. So let go of this myth of afford. It ain't, mm. it is not real. So interesting. So. So on my challenge right now, one of the things that I teach people is I can't afford it is not a real concept. So, yes. And like, so you say there's no such thing as afford. And I'm it's so interesting how we've never had a conversation. We never met until this this week, right? <laughs> yes. Right? The first time I ever had a conversation with you was last, I heard of you a while ago. But the first time I ever met you was last week. And so I always tell people I can't afford it is not a real concept. I can't afford it is a construct. Yes. And let me tell you what the construct I can't afford it really means. I can't afford it means this is not important enough to me to figure it out. Yes. Did you hear what I just said? This is not important enough to me to figure it out. And when it becomes important enough for you to figure it out, you'll figure it out. That's correct. Right? 100%. And people say, people say um, uh, so I teach, I teach the people, like, when I'm training them, change, I can't afford it, to exactly what you said. It's so crazy. It's almost identical words. Instead of saying, I can't afford it, which is like a dead end street, yes. say, how can I afford it? Yes. How can I buy it? Yes. What, what money moves do I need, I need to, to make? make. Oh, <laughs> I saw what you did there. I saw what you did there. What money moves do I need to make so I can move this money around? The other thing that I noticed, that, I, and maybe you can tell me if you noticed this too, I noticed that, that one of the biggest differences between the way rich people buy things and the way poor middle class people buy things Poor and, poor and middle class people buy things with money they've exchanged their time for. Mm -hmm. So they feel like everything they buy has cost them a part of their life yes. because it has, mm -hmm. right? And so is this worth this much of my life? Is this worth that much of my life? Is yes. this much worth? And because like you paid for it with your, your money that you traded your time for, you have a limited amount of time and then we're all, we all have a limited amount of time then we're gonna die, yes. right? So if you're like, so, so, so when you fill, every time you fill up your car with gas, it costs you part of your life. Every time you go to your grocery store, it costs you part of your life. Every time you pay your mortgage, it costs you. And that's why people have their heels dug in and they have so much resistance when it comes time to pay. But entrepreneurs, we don't pay for stuff with, with um, our time. Mm -hmm. We pay for stuff with our creativity. And creativity, creativity is something we have in unlimited supply. Absolutely. Unlimited supply, which means now, all I have to do when I wanna buy something is create the thing that is gonna pay for it. Correct. Every time my income has gone up, it's just because I wanted something. <laughs> I wanted something wow. that I needed to go make the money to go get that it's thing. It's so crazy how like ex how that ex works exactly like that. Yes. If you feel like you are not motivated enough to get out there and figure out how you're going to make more money, just figure out what you want. Once mm. you figure out what you and want. And then decide yes. you're willing to do whatever it takes to go get it. Exactly. Mm. That's it. That's, that's all it is. Mm. And the thing is also... If you don't want to buy something, just say, I don't want to buy it. Don't say I can't afford it. it. And definitely don't say I can't afford it to your kids either, right? right. Because you don't want to teach them that concept either because mm. it's very limiting, mm. right? You are in your power when you're spending your money or when you're not spending your money. So like, 100. I don't want those shoes, so I'm not going to buy them, mm. <laughs> right? It's not that I can't afford them. I can certainly afford them, but I ain't buying them because <laughs> I don't want them, you I know? <laughs> that's so good. I don't want that house. I don't want that vacation, but I do want this or I do want that, right? Whatever it is you want. Um, just use the powerful language, right, in, in your life instead of pretending that some third party is controlling you. Mm, so good, so good. Instead of pretending that some con third party is controlling you or for, instead of letting some third party control exactly. you. Exactly, also right? that. Letting some c third party pretend that they're controlling you. And yes. then you buy it into the lie. Well, Don't buy the lie, it costs too much. There's a chapter in there called Million Dollar Boundaries. Ooh. <laughs> so it'll help you deal with all that. <laughs> wow. So, 
So the money moves you're going to help people make in the Make Money Moves Challenge mm-hmm. is going to shift a whole bunch of stuff in their consciousness. And That's their right. They're, they're, going to be, they're going to be seeing stuff they never saw before. Right, because we all know, right, when you think differently, then you act differently, mm. right? And then you're going to have different things. Well, you're going to do different things, you're going to have different things. Well, <laughs> sound, like somebody, sound like somebody know what they're talking about. <laughs> hey, guys, I, I can't speak for you, but like... I can say that if you are wondering how you're gonna make your life work and you're worried about the price of gas and you're worried about the price of food and you're worried about the supply chain and the this and the that and the next, like go to Rachel's challenge, makemoneymoves.co. Did yes. I say it right? Yes. Makemoneymoves.co and get registered for her challenge like stat. Yes. Literally all it's a steal. Okay. How much is it? How much is it? Ninety five dollars. And listen, I don't do nothing is for ninety five dollars. I don't, I don't sneeze. I won't look your ge- way for $95. Is that the general admission? Okay. <laughs> is that the general admission? Or the That's VIP? general admission. And then you can do VIP if you want, which I highly recommend. Okay. Uh, if you can do VIP, do VIP. It's two ninety five. dollars But it's, a, it's, a, it's the best deal in town. What's, okay? What's the difference between VIP and general admission? <laughs> the VIP, um, you get an extra hour with me every day. And we're going to do a Q&A. And you get to listen in and, and learn and and increase your transformation, increase how quickly your transformation is going to happen for you. So, so let me ask you another question, if I may. So when you do one-on-one consulting, what's your hourly rate? Oh, well, it's now $50,000. $50,000 an hour. Correct. Okay, so. And so, worth every penny, I might add. Okay, so $50,000 an hour, but if you do a VIP ticket, you get to at least, I don't know if they get to ask you questions, but they at least get to hear you answer other people's questions. Mm-hmm. Or ask you questions, I don't know what, I don't know how it works. Y'all don't miss this train. This sister has made millionaires, and maybe you maybe maybe you won't be the next one, but who knows? Maybe you will. Yes. Right. Seriously. And and people ask me this question all the time, so I'm going to ask you, if you could go back and talk to the younger version of version of Rachel yes. before before you were a high powered, big time, high paid New York lawyer. I just want to make sure I used all the adjectives. <laughs> get them um, all in there. Get them all in there. <laughs> Um, and you could give her a piece of advice, what would you tell her? I would tell her that making money is easy. Come on, here. Yeah. So just go do it. Wow. <laughs> That's what I would tell her. Because her biggest stress in life was making money, right? And just like overdraft bank accounts, calling the, y'all ever done this? Call the bank, try to reverse the fees. Like oh, so much time I wasted worrying about money because I didn't have any. Mm. And I needed it, right? To live, to survive. Like I was just trying to get by. Um, and so I would tell her making money is so much easier than you think it is. Just get out there and start doing it. Trust yourself and trust your own talents and abilities and creativity. It is valuable and people want it. It's, okay? it's so weird how you and I literally just met not even a week ago and we have so many philosophies I in know. common. It's so weird. It's We're like, like related. We must be so, at least cousins. Like long lost. <laughs> <right>? <laughs> <laughs> What's, like, like what you just said, it's like my first, my literally, my very first major financial breakthrough happened in April of 1999. And I remember it because it was so life changing. So in 1998, I made $48,000 for the whole year. A whole year went by and I only made $48,000, yes. right? But in April of 1999, I made $6,200 in one week. Mm. And you know what I said? What? The first thing I said was, wow. <laughs> Then you know what I did? I said it backwards. I said, wow. <laughs> and I said, that was so easy. Exactly. And then I said, that must mean it's easier to make a lot of money in a short period of time mm-hmm. than it is to make a little money over a long period of time. It's unbelievable that that is true. How true that is. Yes. So you know what I decided to do that day? This is 19, I'm telling you, this decision right here that I made changed my life forever. And here's what I decided to do when I discovered that. I said, I am going to stop looking for and I'm going to stop looking at all of the hard ways to make a little bit of money, and yep. I'm only gonna look at, and I'm only gonna look for the easier ways to make a lot. Mm-hmm. And that is what I have spent the last several decades of my life doing, ignoring all the hard ways to make a little bit of money. Myron, I got this opportunity, we can make $25,000. It's gonna cost me $25,000 to hear that bad idea. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's so true and listen this is what million dollar boundaries is all about that chapter is like stop letting people waste waste your your time time. 100 listen your time is valuable okay you can use it it back you don't get it back you can use it to raise your children you could use it to be with your loved ones you could use it to make money and resources for your children and study learn something new play golf there's so many women whatever (laughs) whatever 
whatever it is that you want to do with your time, right? So like, don't, don't, don't make your, don't allow people to waste your time. Your time is money making time, okay? Mm -hmm. So do you want to give these money making hours away to this thing? If it's your children, you probably do. If it's somebody you don't care about who's talking about nonsense, you don't. And just right. be like, let me stop you right there, right? Don't even let them finish that sentence. <laughs> so, so, and you know, it's interesting that you say that and, and we're, we're gonna wind it up because we ain't trying to keep y'all here all day even though we can. Yes. We know how to do, both of us know how to do that. Yes, but we just said time is money. Okay, this, very, this very, a lot of money. This hour patience. is a lot, a lot of money, money right okay? <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so, so it's really interesting that when I think about like time and money and what we buy with time, and I live in a nice house, you live in a nice house. We have properties in different places and blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. We have nice vehicles and all mm -hmm. that stuff. But none of, great vacations. We're, I mean, we're getting ready to go on a three-week vacation to the DR, this crazy, amazing resort that we love. We've already been to it before. That's why we're going back. But you know what? None of that stuff is the most valuable thing with money, I buy with money. You know what the most valuable thing I ever buy with money is? I buy back the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. I, I, the most valuable thing I ever spend money on is time. Yes. That's why I pay somebody to clean my pool. That's why I pay somebody to wash my car. Mm -hmm. That's why I pay somebody to cut my grass. Braid my That's hair. That's why I pay somebody. <laughs> well, I don't braid my hair. I, I got to get your beard? some hair. You know? <laughs> <laughs> You're wild. You're wild. <laughs> so. <laughs> Like no, you can't even think I've now. I've never paid anybody to fluff my beard. I didn't even know that was a thing. Okay. <laughs> I learned a lot right now. Uh, okay. Now I know who I'm dealing with. Okay. So, but, but I pay people to do stuff that gives me the time to spend with the people that I love the most. Yes. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Listen, yeah. I'm the queen of delegation. That's how I have four kids in a $10 million business. <laughs> <laughs> I One, can't do everything myself. 100%. And you know what? I won't. I just right. refuse to. 100%. Okay. Rachel. Wow. Amazing. Like we Thank have all you. these philosophies and all these ideas that are so like interwoven. Totally. And we just met. Yeah. Hmm. hmm. Maybe we both discover the same truth. Mm-hmm. Right? In different times, in exactly. different spaces. But the truth is the light. And as my dad would say, the light shines all over. <laughs> <laughs> so so ladies and gentlemen, Rachel Rogers, was she amazing, y'all? Give her some like like show the sister some appreciation in the chat. Show the sister some appreciation. Go register for her challenge. Wow, what a great conversation. I'm yes, so glad. This was so awesome. So glad you we had the time to connect. Wow. Yeah, me too. Thank wow. you for having me and thank you everybody for your attention and so for good. listening. One hundred percent. All right. Until the next time, make sure you like the channel. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you leave a comment. And there's one other thing. Like, like, and then go follow, go subscribe to Rachel's channel too. Yeah, she's going to have some really good stuff coming up. I know. I, <laughs> I, I got a sneaky suspicion. So, <laughs> so in the meantime, in between time, we'll, we'll see.